Hey everyone, I'm Rachel from Wild Backyard Soaps. Thank you for joining me today on this soapy adventure. We are going to make vanilla cookies just in time for the holidays and we're going to add a fun little sprinkle on top. So what's really fun about these cookies is that they have a large percentage of cocoa butter in them and it's unrefined so that natural chocolatey smell sticks. It's amazing. One tip about cocoa butter, it does have a higher melting point, so I usually microwave that separately before I add it to my other oils just to help speed things along. And I did go ahead and blend some kale and clay into my oils as well. And I'm going to be using some titanium dioxide to help whiten up a little bit of frosting that's going to go on top of the cookies. And I'm going to be trying this French vanilla fragrance oil from New Directions Aromatics. I've never used it before. So we'll see how this behaves in the soap. I don't mind it thickening up because we're mostly just going to pour the cookies and then do a little frosting on top. So it should be okay. I'll add the fragrance separately at the end for the white frosting on top just so that it doesn't thicken up too much in the meantime. And one thing that you should know as well, you shouldn't add extracts when you're making soap because there's alcohol in them and those do not behave well in soap. So you cannot put things like vanilla extract to help and it wouldn't even keep its smell anyways. It would lose its scent and it would just ruin your batch. So don't add any vanilla extract. And there isn't really such a thing as vanilla essential oil. And even if there was, it'd be extremely expensive. So that's why in a soap like this, if you really love that vanilla smell, this is the way you have to go is with a fragrance oil. So let's jump in and give this a try. I'm soaping at just over 100 degrees. So how's that for a fun project? The vanilla fragrance oil definitely made it thicken up faster than I wanted to. I should have just mixed less to make up for that so it would pour a little bit smoother of a layer, um, but not too bad. And then I just moved too quick at first. So the first couple cookies when I was pouring the white frosting on top, I accidentally let the frosting kind of spill over to the edge. So I tried to fix it with a spatula, but the rest of them turned out okay. So I feel like it would be appropriate to gel these in the oven. So we're going to pop the cookies in the oven and let them sit overnight. I'll spray them with a little isopropyl alcohol. I just don't want the colors to run on the sprinkles. So we'll see how that behaves. So I'll let you know how that turns out. And we will unmold these babies in a couple days. They do smell really nice. I'm excited. Well, it appears that the colors are not running on the sprinkles, so that's a good thing. I 
I left the cookie part just the natural color since all the oils that I used were a lighter color anyways. These are so cute. Oh my goodness. With silicone molds, I often wait several more days just in case because they take longer to cure and harden up. So it has now been a solid five days and I unmolded these and surprise, they are actually a lot darker than I was expecting. Look at that. So the vanilla, whatever components were in that vanilla fragrance made them really darken. So that was very interesting, but they still look like sugar cookies, but more like chocolate cookies. So I'll show you the tray of them here. Overall, this was a super fun project and I am gonna warn you because they look like real cookies. My daughter wanted to eat one when she saw them, so be careful of that. Keep them where kids are not going to get to them or pets. Thank you again for joining me on this fun soapy adventure. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.